Dave here, how are you? I'm hoping we're live. I always have to wait a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, I should say, for the lag. I think we are live. <clears throat> how are you? Today is the 17th of September in Australia, Eastern Standard Time, and we will be coming up to Daylight Savings soon enough. If someone can let me know when that will be, that'd be terrific. How is the sound? Can you all hear me? And is the picture coming through? Okay, good morning, Carl. How are you? Or oh, good evening for you. Greetings from Northern Kentucky. Um, let me see, is anyone else gonna drop in or is it just gonna be me and Carl? There we go, live audio and video, great. That's great, excellent. Now, here's a little thing. I broadcast this show as a PAL, PAL. Now, I know in America you guys run it NTSC, so I'm curious to see, I, I can see a little bit of a flicker on these boxes behind me just here. Now, I don't know whether that's uh, gonna bug you or not. I haven't really had a chance to muck around with going with NTSC as far as this camera setup's concerned. I may try it another week or two and see how it goes, but if it's okay, I don't wanna muck around with things cause you know, it's like, it's gonna, it'll go, it'll end up in tears. It'll go to mud. Right, I'll do a quick read through and then we'll get into it. Peter Woolworth, uh, hello, good evening from California. G'day, Peter. John DeB, say Dave from Perth, how up uh, Perth? Uh, Apolloni, uh, hello, Dave, good sound, thank you. Andrew, all is working, thank you. Aaron, uh, I'm gonna punch this up a little bit so I can see a little bit better, that's better. I can actually see now. Um, Aaron Matheson, I am here too. Ed. Uh, hello, Dave from Atlanta, Georgia. Andrew Winter, good morning from sunny Adelaide. Jim Coogan, good evening from Monroe, Washington. Mike no, Bongas, morning to all. Jeremy Robinson, I am lying in bed, falling asleep, and hear the notification notification for your live video. So there goes early bedtime. Well, fair enough, Jeremy. Um, <clears throat> uh, Kumambu, uh, hi, David from Fairgrove, Missouri. Andrew, uh, yes, I see Flickr on NTSC. David, still, hello from uh, Satoski. Hello from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, John, oh, good morning, Dave, from sunny Melbourne. Spring has finally arrived here. Yeah, I've got some pictures from my place as well, which I'll show up a little bit later on. Uh, all the trees are flowering, and remember I made that comment about how to tell a hardwood from a softwood. If it's got a flower on it, it's a hardwood. That's all there is to it. All the rest are softwoods. Conifers have cones. They have a male cone and a female cone, so that's not a flower. It's a little bit of information as we're tra tracking through. Uh, Danny, good morning from Germany. Good morning, Danny. J. Parra, good evening from Northern California. Uh, Carl, no longer NTSC, now ATSC with the conversion from analog to digital. I've always considered the mild flicker to be a side effect from your lighting. In any event, it's hardly noticeable. It may well be because, and I'll be changing that pretty soon. I have LED here and just over there and down there. Down this side, I have fluorescent. Now I'm gonna be changing all those fittings down there to LED as well. So hopefully that flicker will disappear when we try that. So I may not muck around with the cameras. I'll hook in and get that done. But I've just been very busy doing things. Angler1262, hello from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, now also, uh, Carl sent me a list of all of the state's abbreviations, uh, but I didn't bring it with me today. So if you guys can keep on typing up the actual state names if you're in Northern America, that'll help me out big time. Kenny Norman, good evening from Northern Car North Carolina. Jack Turpak, good day from South Carolina, USA. Jack, I've uh, got some of the pictures that you sent me about your hard maple bench top, and I'm going to share that with people as well regarding the, the path guide system. And I, good point. You, you brought up a very good point, and I should have uh, brought that up in the video. But, you know, I'm not perfect. Well, not, not today, anyway. <laughs> uh, Daniel Yandel, good morning from uh, Melbourne. Andy Tanner, greetings from Mesa, Arizona. And, and and Gonzo uh, 501, John Kelder's here. Thanks for the MT, oh, the Melbourne MTW show. Yes, yes, uh, really enjoyed it. So that was down at the Melbourne Timber and Woodworking Show. There's one coming up in Canberra and I will be giving tickets away for that as well. I got in touch with the organizers and they said, Dave, not a problem. And you know what they did for me? 
they put a link on their site promoting um, the show. They put a link straight into my channel as well. How nice was that? Um, Joe Brown, g'day Dave, g'day Joe, how are you? Uh, Hersham, uh, good morning from Canada. Robert Jordan, hello from Phoenix, Arizona. Rob Hampton, good morning from Melbourne. Um, Justin Aldo, Maya, uh, I don't, hello amigo, I'm guessing that's saying Andrew Dave, just ordered the Trend Pro Air Shield 450 Canadian on Amazon. It's a bloody nice thing. Now, also, one of the guys in the Secret Society, Dave Stanton, uh, live stream um, Facebook page, and as I say, have a look in the links below this screen, in the box, but open it up and you'll see how to apply to get in. Now, I'm pretty hard on letting people in. I did let one person in this morning and I just had a look through what they like and, you know, the other things they subscribe to and it started freaking me out a bit, so I got rid of them. You know, if I, as I say, it's all about woodworking and having fun. Um, I, I'm a little bit funny that way. Anyway, so John has made, John Lafferty has got a 3D printer and he's made this battery case and put lithium-ion batteries in it and all this other weird technology and electronics. And he's sending me one up for my trend. Well, my one's a Pure Light um, Airstream. And uh, it's the same thing as Trend Air Shield Pro. And it's going to increase the battery life by about three times. So the runtime will be huge because I can get around six to eight hours out of this. So it'll nearly run for a day. That's insane. And no memory and quick charge. And I will share it with everyone when he gets it up to me. Uh, so good on you. Good on you for getting the Airshield Pro. Jim Carroll. G'day, Dave. G'day, Jim. How are you? Uh, Andrew Winter. Can see the flicker on, pal. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to try and work on it. Uh, Jack Thompson. G'day from Amarillo, Texas. Um, hi from Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada. For Hesham. Um, Brian, computer guy, love the new video for the Dave Stanton bench apron. How nice is that? And it's been really well received because it's only been live for uh, 13 hours. And I think it's gone over 2,000 views already. And 1,000 of them is not my relatives. <laughs> it's, it's you guys out there watching it and having fun. And I am going to do a bit with that this morning as well in the show. So if, you, if you're getting bored listening to me to say g'day to everyone, Hang around, even if you're not watching, just listen out for when I start saying, all right, now I'm going to do some demonstrations because I've already done an enhancement to it. I pulled that bent, that apron apart over the weekend and rebuilt it. So I've done something different to it and you guys will have to let me know if you think it's going to be fine. But if you've already started down the track of making it, by all means do it. You can retrofit this part that I'm talking about quite easily. And I'm going to keep on get running with the theme of this bench. I'm making accessories for it now as well, which I think you'll find uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit sexy, if that's the word for woodworking. Okay, I'm going to keep on saying good day to everyone. Uh, Jim Coogan brought the Stanton bench plans, and it's easy to follow. Started, started and build it. Thanks, video helped a lot. Jim, you're probably one of the people that's just gone. Oh my God, what's he done now? He's <laughs> changed the run thing. Jim, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Don't put the uh, cushion strip on the apron quite yet. And I'll show you why a little bit later on in the show. Okay. I have to slide. When I'm moving the moving down through the chat that I see up here on the screen, I have to move the mouse extremely slowly. Otherwise, it goes straight to the bottom and I've lost a whole heap. Um, and as Jim was saying, you can buy the plans for this bench if you want to do it. A lot of people will look at the bench and they'll say, yeah, look, that's easy enough to do. And it is. But if you want to get the advantage of the the couple of weeks it took me to nut it out and go through it and go forwards and backwards and, and try and get a finished article that I'm really happy with, it may be worthwhile getting a hold of the plans because it solves a whole lot of headache for you. You know, they're only 10 bucks Australian, which is what, $7.50 or so US. Links in the description box below. I've done it as JPEGs and PDF. So whichever one you're happy with, it downloads the lot. I think there's four pages in total. So it's pretty easy to follow. And if you need help, if you need any help with it, by all means, flick me an email at davestantonfans at gmail.com. And uh, if you want me to do another section for you, I can probably draw that up for you as well. And I'll pop, pop it up on the Etsy site as well. So have some fun with it. They're, they're pretty easy to follow. They're not as high tech as Steve Innes' plans would be or John Lafferty's. 
they're me as you know a guy that went to school and I did everything with a drawing board. That's how I drew them up. Took them into another little computer program to label it all up, and uh, I think they've come up okay. They will. I think they're worth it. Anyway, that's me. I keep on talking. Um, Russ Albright, hi Dave, great chats. What method of drilling the 20 mil holes do you recommend? So he showed a couple of different ways. Yeah, look, if you use the path guide, that's great. If you use the just an ordinary drill guide, that's still going to do it, but you're not going to get the same accuracy. So if you want to use this bench for using uh, dogs for uh, holding a guide rail to keep you at 90 degrees and 45 degrees perfectly, well then, it's it's not going to work if you drill them three-handed. If you get Peter's system, you've got everything squared away and, and really easy. Um, okay, and Peter Woolworth, Polk had the same flickering from LED lighting and did something to reduce it. Can't recall what he did though. I might ask Ron what he's done because Ron and I, you know, we we have chats as well because you know I'm interested in what he's doing. He's interested in doing live uh, streaming further down the track as well. So I'm sure you'd let me know. Gary Jones coming through now. Excellent. Peter Lissia, good morning. Good morning to you, Peter. Jim Coogan, actually, I'm combining some features from another portable bench I built, so no problem. Excellent. Steve Innes, you who Stanton, the main man. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Um, Andrew went, hey, Steve, uh, and he's going to say hello. Cram, are you on no video? Hello from St. Louis. Finally made it live show. Uh, Cram, I am. The video should be there. And I can see it running up here. I good night. Uh, last week, I think Paul adjusted his frame rate. Okay, I run at 30 frames per, per second. And that's what YouTube likes. I can't run at 24 or 25, which I think is what Pal does, because YouTube just won't even show it. Okay, Sean Habla, hi Dave from Corydon, Cor Cor Indiana, is that it? Um, Keith Martin, hello from Toronto. Okay, here we go, guys. Into the show, of course, it's nearly a quarter past, and where does the time go? Well, it's actually 11 past. Right, um, here we go. Everything's fine. Live demo with the straddle square will be coming up. And, I, you know, when I first saw is he with his straddle square? I thought, yeah, it was a bit meh. But I tell you what, after I've had, after using it a bit, um, I've got a whole new respect for it because it is so easy. And I'm finding I'm getting a whole lot more accuracy. Now, when I did the video about it, I was kind of exaggerating things a little bit, as you do. But I found that if I've got this thing that goes over three sides or two faces and one side, the accuracy is is there, and when I was carp when I was a carpenter and doing framing and everything, you know, accuracy wasn't that important to get within you know a quarter of a million millimeter. You know, a mill or two wouldn't worry. You know, it's only a rafter and butting onto a onto a ridge beam and things like that. So it didn't really concern me. But now that I've got into a little bit more joinery and having fun with it, why not? It's uh, it's a huge difference. Okay. Um, Okay, Simon Smith, hi from Wellington, New Zealand. We'll have to watch the full feed later. About to head to the shed, so a friend can use the track saw and might need to supervise so he leaves with all fingers intact. Fair enough. Dynamax, good morning, David. Good morning, Dynamax. Steve McQuill, uh, McQuillan, good evening, Dave. How are you? Are you 1978? I love the bench. So do I. You know, I know that I haven't got onto the rest of this and I'm still chatting, but, you know, it's... Uh, it's kind of, it's Sunday morning, I'm relaxed, I'm having some fun, and you guys have obviously decided you want to come in and see what's happening. The, this new bench that I built, the big one that I'm sitting at, that's in front of the table saw, the infeed table, the top cost me quite a few dollars, and I didn't want to go drilling holes into that. So this is my portable dog hole bench for assembling, clamping, what have you. I love it. It's, it takes me two seconds so I pop it over the side there, and then I've got the full table back again. I can move it around to any part of the workshop. If I have projects set up in, the, in a particular part, I can move this dog hole bench anywhere else in the workshop and keep going. I love it. Absolutely love it. I don't know why I didn't do this stupid thing earlier. I can even take it up to the 
house if I'm doing some work up in the house and I've got a full bench top up there. It's I'm blowing my own trouble a bit here, aren't I? But it's so much fun. Steve, uh, well, lots of overseas people, Dave, they are very happy to stay up so late. They are indeed. And thank you everyone for staying up. Gary Jones, I had to reboot YouTube to get the video to come through. Try try that, Pam. Andrew, 72 watching already. Okay, so if you're watching, click the thumbs up as well if you like what's happening. Um, you know, it's early days as far as the video is concerned for a thumbs up, but uh, I have some interesting things. And one of the little things I'm going to show you is this. Now, you might say, wow, Dave, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, you should be. This is uh, a thing that I'm going to talk about in the show later on. There's a couple of different adhesives that I've tried. So I know that uh, there's people that like Gorilla Glue. I know there's people that like uh, Tight Bond. And there's another thing out called Prep. And that's something I'm starting to get very, very interested in. All right, keep on going. Uh, John Lafferty, good morning, Dave. Late start for me, so that's okay. Steve, thanks, Dave, for your help with the Easy Square. Seems like he may have had the wrong email. It's now enjoying an airline flight. Oh, I'll tell you what. When you get it, Steve, you you might be like me and you think, oh, yeah, would I would I really want to get the thing? But once you've got it, it's like most things. Once you've got it, you turn around and you go, how the hell did I ever get by without this stupid thing? Um, Steve, hello from overseas. Keep up the coffee intake. Good on you, Steve. Now, you see Steve and John and Carl have got a little spanner beside their pictures there. They're moderators, and uh, they just try and keep the show running smoothly for me in the background. Just, they just do it because they're, they're nice people. Give me a sec. All right. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Um, all right. Now, as I said, I've knocked up a couple of pages of plans for the skirt for the uh, Stanton bench, skirt or apron, whatever you want to call it. Drop side, um, a stationary deadman. You could call it that because, you know, on a main bench, on Arthur's bench, I've got the sliding deadman underneath the bench that I can put a dog in any position. So if I'm working on something like planning a door or, or something like that, well, that's a whole lot more better suited for a big article. But this one with the dogs in underneath on that skirt adds a lot of support. Andrew Winter, it's in the thingamabob day. Well, there you go, Mike, the woodworker. Good day to all. Okay, so as I said, give me the thumbs up if you can. Um, let people know the show's on. Do you know we had three over 3,000 people last week watch the show? I think we had about 111 people watching the show while it was live at the maximum point. So it was around five or 600 people watched the actual live show. And then over the week, people just kept on coming back, coming back, coming back. It's insane. Uh, and... How about we do it this week? Now, I did say last week also I wanted to get up to a pretty high level of uh, subscribers. Uh, fell short by a few hundred. Anyway, not to worry. It's because I didn't get this out last week, this uh, bench top. Uh, Brian, the computer guy. Hey, Dave, do you suggest we do dog holes with metric and not imperial? If it doesn't matter, is there an imperial option with a template? Um, itchy nose. Peter Parfit and uh, UJ, oh, sorry, and Axminster have not yet made a three-quarter inch system. Now, I don't know if they're going to or not. I know that Peter uh, is having thinks about what to do. And he says there's some things in the pipeline, which is always good to hear. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Steve's making comment in the back right there. Um, so my suggestion would be to use... Peter's system with the three millimeter drill, because that is going to give you the 96 millimeter layout. And once you've got that three millimeter drill, you could possibly make a series of three quarter inch dog holes in the bench, and then also use his 20 millimeter Forstner bit to create the important dog holes to work with his path guide system. So with the path, with these uh, path dogs or with any of the festal dogs, he's got a couple of tall dogs that are designed to hold or to, to position the uh, track for the festal track saw. So that it's at 90 degrees to another set. So you could do an incorporation. That's what I'm basically trying to get at. 
you can do a series of 20 mil holes in in uh, important air regions on the board and then you can do other holes that are 19 millimeters that will allow you to use your other dogs as well so that that might be a way to do it Steve McQuillan I'll give you the thumbs up now Dave in good faith don't let me down thank you so much very generous character uh, Okay, Carl, Steve, didn't know you had one. Okay, Steve McQuillan, I'll refer to it as a dead man. I can't imagine the look on the wife's face when I tell her I'm heading to the shop to play with Dave skirt. Um, okay, Steve, I don't, because I'm not handsome. Okay, Dynamics. All right, let's get into the rest. The day's disappearing in front of me. Okay, as I say, everything's in the description box below if you want to get anything, if you want to get the plans or anything like that. I've got a whole heap of information down there. If you want to support the channel as well, I've got information down there. You can use Super Chat. There's a few other ways if you wish, but if you want to, Super Chat's fine. And again, I don't ask you to do it, but if you want to do it, it is very well appreciated. I'll tell you what, it's, it does help. It puts a smile on my face and it helps the channel kick along. Keeps me interested. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Um... Dynamax, that would look strange. All right, next thing, where are we? John Lewis. John Lewis has been over, he's over in Switzerland. Remember John is the guy that made that really beautiful tool cabinet. He's done all the outside and put the finish on it. He hasn't done anything to the inside yet, but he's, uh, because it's warm over there in Switzerland, he said, I think I should get hook in and do something outside. So what he's done, he says, it's not in the workshop. Uh, Hi, Dave. How are you? Been out of the shop the last week, uh, but busy with the patio project. The original was on gravel and had somewhat moved unevenly over the years. So I'll start John's little thing up here. All right, here we go. I'm going to read over the top of it. So there's the old part. It was on gravel. Umbrellas and awnings kept blowing away, so I had to take up the concrete slab tiles and gravel and cast a proper foundation with connections to the main building. No, it ain't going anywhere. Phase two will be preparing the roof structures next week. Cheers from Switzerland. Now you'll see down the middle there, he's got a concrete section and that is to run the screed on. And the next picture, I think these are little uh, supports. There you go. You can see where he's got the, the kind of an island down the middle that he's put in and he's screeded from one side to the other. And that was, I've never seen that done like that before because his uh, timber wasn't wide enough to go the full width. And that's, you know what lake that is out there to the left. Here's all the tiles arriving. And the, the high ab is picking the, the packet up and sending it up the top. And I'm guessing John had a contractor do some of this stuff for him as well. But there's the end result. Doesn't that look nice? That's absolutely beautiful. Lake Geneva, I think it is, that's out, out in the distance there. I don't know if he has to go up to the top story to see it. But back to me again. And where are we? The next part here. I'll see which is the next one we're going to have a look at. Okay, so see, we're talking about the bench. Let's get on to the thing that Jack Turpak, Turpak has sent to me. And I'll slide through to there. Bought the UJK Path Dog system after watching the video. I was not interested in creating an MDF table, but wanted to see if the system would work in 41 millimeter hard maple. Picture shows the results. The table is three feet by seven feet. So I'm gonna run this and uh, it's great. And I learned a few things I thought you would like to share with your fans. The initial pilot holes have to be drilled all the way through. The pilot on the bit does not like trying to grind its way through hard maple. I drill all the pilot holes about half an inch and then went back and drilled them all a second time using the pilot holes, first pilot hole as a guide. My only complaint would be that I wish the special drill bit was about half an inch longer. I could not get complete penetration in one pass. Um, I lacked about an eighth of an inch and ended up going back and finishing without the jig by hand. Well, doesn't that look great? So there is another application instead of just going down the MFT style of bench top or thin ply, to actually go full on in a massive big maple bench. And that, that's great. I think Jack is pretty happy with that. Let's see what else we have here. Next one, next one, next one. 
Um, so there we go, John and Jack. And then also we've got Graham Ormisha. Now, Graham, remember, is the guy that's been not well and he's uh, trying to get back to work. And he has sent in some pictures for me of some things recycling. So this is really, really nice. Now, Graham, I'll start reading again here. Glasses, of course. Uh, oh, right, okay. So he's, what he's done, he's sending two ideas for me. A quick to make zero clearance fence for the bandsaw. A slab of thick ply gives you a nice flat surface for small fiddly bits and safe zero clearance table. It can be stuck down with double sided tape or a clamp. Let's get Graham's uh, little show running here. You can use this on the table saw too, but securing it down with a clamp on the fence or tape onto the table would be advisable. So that's a pretty good idea. A similar thing on a sander will prevent the belt grabbing and snatching delicate pieces down the gap between the belt and the table, just like he's shown us there. Now he's also made this racer. How good is that? Made from some old mahogany handrail I've had knocking around for a job and cut off of maple. I made a few blanks in case the first one went wrong and potentially to make a few cars. But the first went to plan and took the week off took the week on and off, so I'll shelve the others as I have other bits I want to do. Finished with Alfie Shine. Uh, for your information, Dave, a wax product invented by another Facebook Woody mate of mine and named after his dog, Jimi Hendrix. Yes, his name and spelling is correct. I thought Barry was a funny name. But anyway, I'm going to let this video run. So if it cycles around again, don't worry. Uh, he had a very close call with his heart. Uh, he's our age and now devotes his time to creating wonderful wooden planes as well as complicated electronics and engineering project, projects in his shed. Alfie Shine is manufactured by a UK tool manufacturer to Jim's recipe and is well received here and in US and Canada. I'm pretty sure he said they had to go ahead for Australia as well. He's currently converting a miniature milling machine into a CNC using parts made on his 3D printer uh, that he bought in kit form so that he could massage the electronics. Um, never ceases to amaze me the car is not a patch on Gary Ingram stuff, but a fun, quick project that the little fella will get some fun from. I reckon that looks brilliant, Graham. How nice is that? Isn't it nice when you can just get a hold of some old timber, <coughs> pardon me, and make something up? And that thing with the zip tie, do you see how he locked it into the into the drawer press, into the vise, rather than crushing the jaws onto the, the, the mahogany body. He's locked it in with, uh, he's created a U-sectioned channel in, uh, in a piece of timber, put some cloth in there, dropped it in and zip tie around the whole lot. And then he'd get both the wheels to have, both the axles to be perfect. Otherwise the car would rock if he got it wrong, if it moved at all. Very good. I'm going to slide back up to here. Having trouble posting in chat, Paul in Sweden. Okay, very nice. John, you'll get a lot of views from the patio, won't he ever? Uh, Carl Karcher, okay, Steve, you can have a Geneva convention on it. Make sure you have a barbecue. Exactly right. Nice bench. Jim Carroll, Jack, as you have drilled the three millimeter holes all the way through, could you have flipped the table over and finished the holes this way? Of course, that would be a good idea as well. And I think he did because then you won't get any tear out on the, on the, the, um, back side of we of the bench and I think I made comment about that when I was doing the MFT bench right at the beginning when I was talking about Peter's path dog or UJK path guide system in the original video I did for him about that not for him but it was you know kind of I don't get any kickback from that at all just letting you guys know Peter has got someone that's got I've got a lot of time for because he's obviously very meticulous about everything he does and what he developed there was an answer to something that people have been struggling over for years and years and years. Now here's, here's another thing, when I say I didn't get a kickback, they did send me a free UJK path guide system to play with and I think it's paid off handsomely for them. What do you guys reckon? And I get to keep it. So, you know, I guess that's a kind of payment. Um, okay, good idea, Jim. Uh, Andrew, very nice bench. Steve, well, love that racer so stylish in design. Isn't it lovely? He's done a beautiful job with it. Um, Steve Innes, Graham, I love the simplistic style. That is so now. Great job on the car by Rob, Rob Hampton saying great job on the car. 
What have we got next? Go back to my list. Uh, half fast already. Uh, remember, keep on doing the thumbs up, guys. Okay. Um, Nick Gibbons. Let's jump on to Nick Gibbons section. And that will be all of the people that uh, have sent stuff into me. Now, Nick is a guy in New Zealand. And he says, finally got some time in to progress the MITRE station in my workshop, and I'm super happy with the results. Initially, I was pretty distraught when I came across the Bosch cantilevered. Um, initially, I was pretty distraught when I came across the Bosch cantilever drop saw. No longer after I'd seen started cutting all the plier and realized how much space I'd saved with reduced depth. But now it's built. I'm loving uh, that I had to make such enormous storage. Okay. I'm going to start the show on it. Uh, I've still got to add a few coats of polyurethane to harden the surfaces up a bit and also add the fence and stop uh, and attach, attach the dust extraction, which should be fun. Um, but I'm loving the experience. One feature I forgot to take a photo of are the T-slot rails I have the saw on. It allows me to unlock and then pull the whole saw forward easily when I want the full 45 degrees each way and still exhaust into the dust shroud. Fun to work out as I went along. That's so true. I love that kind of stuff. The draw set nearest has two features I love. Firstly, it is on casters and pulls around to act as an in feed for my table saw. And secondly, the sacrificial top that hangs on the side for when I want to use it with my Festool rail and TS55 or do some drilling. So thank you very much for sharing that with us, Nick. That's fantastic. And you guys, if you want to see these things before I do them on the show, again, these posts are going into the Dave Stanton fans or the Dave Stanton live stream um, Facebook page. Again, links in the description box down there. Let's have a look here. Um, beware the FBT. Okay. <laughs> Fringe benefits tax. Yeah. Ian Kerry, hello, Dave. Uh, good thanks and yourself. Having a play with the new Craig Master system on this beautiful morning all the way down here, the Great Western Highway at Springwood. And thanks for your help with that. Oh, Ian, how are you? Now, Ian is a character who uh, placed an order for the K5 Master System um, at the shop that I work at. And I thought I recognized that name. And then I had a chat to him a little bit later on. And I realized that eight years ago, he sold a tungsten chainsaw blade to me. And that blade has been fantastic. I, I've touched it with a diamond file once. And I've taken a lot of trees down with it. And it's worked and worked and worked and worked. I love it. It's all in the blade. Uh, so thanks for that, Ian. Bob Lewin, how are you, Dave? Greetings from New Jersey. <laughs> thanks, Bob. And greetings to you. Steven, lots of thumbs up today. Excellent. Excellent. Now, guys, the videos that I'm doing, are you liking those? As I say, the whole thing, all of my channel has been about the progression of building this workshop. And people have been saying, oh, it's all about the, the workshop. You're not actually making anything. Well, I do make things. And I made everything that's in here. And I built the thing. But little projects like this, I'm starting to focus on those. So if you like that kind of stuff, I'll still keep doing it. But the thing is, I need you to give me input and and um, the thumbs up, as I say. And then I look at it and go, all right, well, it's worthwhile. People are enjoying what I'm doing. Because otherwise, I don't know. I'm just like a lost ship floating around in the sea. And subscribe, of course. Yeah, subscribe to the channel. Um, take a photo of where you're watching and show the show from and email into me. Send in photos of your workshop and projects. Uh, I've already done all the images from the viewers. Keep the channel afloat. Use the affiliate links in the description box below. Check through the chat. Say hi. Um, now, before I jump into this part, I'm going to talk about floor mats. Now, I am here on a floor mat. Now, over the side here, I'm going to swing this camera around a little. You can see down the workshop that I've got this matting. Now, if it's great. If it's really, really comfortable. I, you know, it absorbs all the shock. But because it cushions so much, it's no good for machines to wheel around. That's why you'll see here, if I spin this around a little bit more, 
these machines are still sitting on the plywood floor because these are extremely heavy and they have steel wheels on them that are only very small diameter. So these things aren't really designed to go tearing down the motorway on. The chair that I've got is, has got slightly larger wheels and they're plastic and the machines on the mobile bases over there that I've built have got rubber wheels. Now I'll spin this around this way and hopefully we won't lose anything. So you can see down there, I'm going to swing that around. Now the, mat, the mats that they're on are hard backed. So they're rubber backed carpet square. They're a metre by a metre and they're very thin, but very dense. And those machines, even the mobile base on under the linisher, wheels around on that pretty, pretty okay. It does creep it a little bit, but there's no way you can move them on these mats here. So that's why I cut this section out and I'm going to, and also, as I say, bring it around this side. And you can see down there, I've got the chair on one of those mats as well. Now, we're still streaming, good. Now, why do I tell you guys these things? Well, because it makes it so much easier. Like, I enjoy mucking around in the shed as we all do. And if I get something right, I like to be able to share it with you. What's the next thing? What's the next? I'll do a quick read and then lots of 86 now, only eight thumbs up. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear me. So there's 86 people watching and only eight thumbs up. Well, there you go. I'll swing around and do some demos. Uh, Steve, yep, Dave, the videos are great. Gives great ideas. Excellent. Jim Coogan, great videos. I started watching ones I've missed and have other projects on my list based on them. Thanks for sharing with us. That's fine. Andrew Winter, being new to WordWork, I love your videos and learning loads. TJ is in the house. <laughs> How are you, TJ? Um, what's up, my good friends? Okay, Andrew. Brian Computer Guy, videos of other projects would be great, but I appreciate your workshop improvement videos. We all need to make things easier for ourselves, even if some of us can't afford festival. Fair call, fair call. All right, I'm gonna swing the video camera over there and we'll hook into this. Now it should it should be okay there. All right, can everyone see everything okay? This is the uh, bench, and I think possibly if I move the camera over here a little bit more, that might work. To do that, I have to get another board, because otherwise the camera is gonna fall in the sink. Oh, and look what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use... <laughs> Everything in this workshop is going to be dog old, you know that, don't you? Okay, bring it around a bit further. That's a bit better. All right, now here's an interesting little thing. How do you like that? It's just one of the long path dogs. So I've just popped that in there and I've got a support. Now you'll notice here, this is the improvement that I've done. This is a T-track. I'll bring the camera down closer and as I say, I pulled it apart and put that T-track on there. Now I can still use the dog holes, but I can also now use the Craig bench clamps down here. Now with this one, I put that in with this stuff and it was the first time I'd ever used that and wasn't that an experience. <laughs> Now I need you to tell me if you've ever used polyurethane liquid glue. It's amazing stuff, it's as strong as, but I'll tell you what, as soon as you put it on one surface, on the dry surface, and then the thing you're gonna to glue to it, you you wet it down with, with, a, with a rag, don't leave too much water on it, just wet it down, and then you put bring it together. Now it activates the glue. It's one of those weird things. And never having used it before, 
I used this style of track that has holes in it for the screws. And then what happened was <laughs> the glue, as it gets activated, starts to foam up and it expands out. So it fills voids. It's really, really good glue. But it's so messy and it, it expanded out through there. And then I had to get the glue off the inside. So I thought, all oh, right, I'll just drive the screws down through those holes because I only had it clamped at that time. Put the screws in and I've even pushed up through the hole and around past the screw head and up above that. Then I had to clean it all out. And then I lost, I don't know how many T-bolts I put through this to try to clean the glue out of the, all the T-bolt section. It was a debacle. So anyway, I had it clamped down by using the screws. And then finally, I spent the next 20 minutes doing it. So what I'm gonna do on the show today is I'm going to use this stuff. Now this is prep multi adhesive and as I say this is that's what I've done with it now that it says 48 hours for it to set so that's been on for about 12 hours and they're not going anywhere you know they're really holding so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this t-track out of here and I'm going to put prep underneath and then screw the T-Track back on, and I'll let you guys know next week how it works. This is what the glue looks like. That's, that's, that's the, uh, the polyurethane glue. And how good are these brushes? Watch this. Watch. Done. Look at that. It's like a reptile skin. And there's, there's the glue brush. So sometimes, sometimes it's best to leave glue on those silicon brushes and let it dry and then just peel it off. But that's amazing. I thought I'd never get that. And this end, if I didn't have that, that end there, yesterday to clean out this track, <laughs> I would have had to build a whole new skirt. Anyway, if you decide you want to build one of these things, it's not hard to put that track in just below the, the first cushion. Don't put the cushions in yet if you're going to do that. Okay, so leave the cushions out until you've done it. And I'd also make comment that it's possibly best to go two and a half millimeters deep with the cushion material. With the track, I've gone just over three eighths of an inch. So it's about 10 millimeters. I, I set those in. So they're slightly below the surface. And these things, I love them. I absolutely love them. Now I'm going to cut, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that T-bolt down to that black mark. The reason being, hey Steve, how are you buddy? You made it. Um, I'm going to have a quick look here. Peter, just buy the plans and make your own pin if your piece suppresses. Uh, you two are just jealous. I haven't read the rest of the comments above there guys. I'll slide back. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay. You love me. <laughs> love me, TJ. Well, that's fantastic. Um, thumbs up at 79. Excellent. James West Oz Garbo Productions. Another lazy Sunday drinking coffee and watching Dave. <laughs> Good idea. Um, and thanks for coming. What else we got here? Uh, Danny, I like the mix of workshop updates, projects, and tool reviews. I think it contains some very useful advice for beginners, even if it just points out what is useful. And sometimes what's really blatantly obvious, but we just don't see it. What have we got next? Uh, Jay Parr, I love the videos. Learning something new every time. Keep it up. Thank you. Dynamax that. Uh, Stephen Quill, let's face it. If half the projects in the shop aren't shop projects, you earn too much money. Uh, I'm not... Don't really follow that one. If half the projects in the shop aren't, well, there you go. I'll, I have to think about that one too much. Denny, or only works in combination with more expensive equipment. The viewer has to decide what's right situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm going to have a think about that. I'll read through all the chat later on. Uh, you're showing 84 subscribers. Uh, thumbs up. Great. Um, Denny, you're right, Dave. Should do some evaluation of tools to help people in their 
selection store reviews. Yeah, we can do that. That's fine, Steve. Uh, Peter, when does the new bench get given away? It is staying with me. It is not getting given away. I love it. Uh, okay, more comments from TJ and Steve. Uh, yes. Yes, Peter. Oh, man, there's so much chat here. Um, <laughs> right. Steve uh, made it. Yes. Steve, what did you make the show of the bench? No, he just made it here. Dave, well, Dave explained some time ago how he funds the channel. And quite some YouTubers are aware of paid review bias or other problems, but learning about a new useful tool is always appreciated. Um, Robin had the same problems. I'm out later. See you later, TJ. And I'm making Dave's bench top, but using it on a Polk box. That's fine. Stephen all about the show. I'm um, going to make all sorts of things. One day. <laughs> no, you're not, Stephen. One day. Uh, Scott, hello from Michigan. Dave, enjoying the videos. Uh, 84, uh, 85. Channel videos are more real than most YouTubers. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, who go guys. Mike, Christmas morning, Dave. All sorry, late, but uh, laptop, so my phone. Welcome from Adelaide. Fine. Ken Bonsa. You were showing all of the stuff from the company I work for. I am I Ken. Andrew Winner. Hi, Michael. It's nice and sunny today. Hey, how are you? Uh, Bob Lowe and Dave, more projects like the workbench stool made with Craig screws. It's one of the handiest things I've made. And by the way, where's the one you made? Well, hold on. Hold on. I've got to do this quickly. Here it is, I've still got it. I love this stool. And it looks great. That's just a piece of Merbo with a couple of bits of Oregon either side. Pine frame, and as you can see underneath, all pocket hold together. And it's a it's a very comfortable stool. And I think I put yeah. I put these little guys on the underside so it doesn't scratch or mark the floor, doesn't make any noise. Very nice, I love that stool. Alright. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to look at the chat anymore. I'm going to hook into getting this done. Right, soft jaw. And where's the other soft jaw? Is it up here or not? I don't want to damage the, um, the bolt when I cut it. It's funny, you know, I, I start this off and I, I start to panic. I think oh, I've got nothing to talk about today. And then you know what it's like. All of a sudden, you can't shut me up. How good is this? This is brilliant. I love it. Where's that bolt? Great, 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 great. Where'd you put it, David? There it is. Now, ordinarily, I put a nut on there. Uh, because if I stuff it up, that's not going to... Now why am I cutting this? That's pretty good. That's quite good. I'm going to cut this because I'm going to put it in this Craig clamp. Now this is the older style of Craig clamp, which is my favorite as a matter of fact. But there's not a lot of space just there for the bolt to go up in. And that bolt is a one inch, so I've worked out how much I need to cut off it. And you may decide to turn the sound down now because I'm going to use my old hacksaw. It's only got, it's got more teeth than Barry, but only just. And see these things? I got these the other day, they're about five bucks. And I'm using this with, when I'm using the Air Shield Pro, because as I've said, the earmuffs on those things just don't work. And the only problem with this is a bit like a doctor's stethoscope. When you put it on and it touches the shirt behind your neck, it goes, you know, it amplifies the sound. It all comes in through here. So I put it on under there and it doesn't hit things. All right, remember, turn the sound down.
How was that? That wasn't too loud, was it? There we go. That's warm. Ha! Ah, I'm an idiot. That was very warm. So I will not be picking that up for a second. Or what I might do <clears throat> is pick it up with that just to hold it. I hope it doesn't melt that. And let's see if I can get it started in the base. There she goes. See that? Now this is instead of the dome screw that they have. Let's see if she'll be able to yeah. And to tighten it up, I do it until it's not rocking, not too far. Beautiful. That's it. Now if I pop that out of the way, I can slide this in here. There we go. As I said, this stuff, uh, that's not going anywhere. How nice is that? Um, there's still a little bit of glue residue in there and it's, it's catching a little bit. So as I say, this is why we're going to do it with this one now. So I'll pop this out. Grab that out. Pop that over there. And we'll do this first, then I'll do the straddle square. There we go. Actually, what I'll do is I'm jumping around all over the place. I'm going to have a quick chat about the straddle square while, while we're at it. Now, this piece of timber is not square. It's parallel. That is parallel with that, and this is parallel with that. Now, if I was to do a square line around there, I would be in trouble. But it makes it a whole lot easier with this thing. So again, it's a matter of just squeeze it, drop it on. And can you see the gap? I'll get it so it's lining up so you can see down in my shirt. Must be able to see it there. Right. Now that's not going to happen all the time, but now what I can do. For whatever reason, I'm not saying this is going to happen all the time, I can put a line there and a line there, and I'm square, and I can do a 45. Okay, I've got the gap there, just there, so I can do a 45 there. there. Bring that back. That's very handy. When I was doing this, I also used the straddle square. I had it hooked over the edge. Let's say it's there. I had it hooked over and I just slid along to wherever I need. Do the mark and it's finished. So quick. As I say, a straddle square is something that I had never really considered. Now, this is a piece of cypress that's going to take it to basically its full capacity, but it'll go on. There you go. Holds on upside down and everything. Uh, so I can, I can mark there there and there. So have a look at that. All in one go. So the light there might have stuffed you up a little bit. But you can see 
what I mean. If I'm doing this kind of stuff, if I was doing this all the time, if I was doing dovetails and all that kind of stuff, this is just so quick. So, so, so quick. Instead of trying to line up, trying to line up. And I know you can do it, and I know you can get very accurate, but this is so convenient. Anyway, very, very nice. And it's one of those tools that I'm not going to use all the time. And I, you know, I know it's going to sit on in the drawer a lot. But so do my squares. I only drag them out when I need them. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Prep. Now this is a glue, as I say, that I've seen a few guys use. I know Stan up in Queensland uses this for gluing massive big slabs together of uh, red gum. And if it's good enough for Stan, it's good enough for me. There you go, Stan. Ah, uh, you still also have some hard track junk tools and great also. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to back these out. Now these are the short. These are screws that I've uh, cut down with the. I'll put them there. What I might do is I also might create a small well on here somewhere to put things in so they don't roll around. I've seen that idea on other people's shops. So that could be good to incorporate. Yeah, so as I was saying, these are the screws that I ground the back off. And I have noticed while I'm clamping things, especially with the, uh, the Craig bench clamps, I'm getting a lift in the... And the thing, and I'm thinking it's only a matter of time where it's going to be a mess for me. Now, if if I was using the polyurethane glue, I wouldn't use. This is Dave from experience talking now. If I was using the polyurethane glue, I would not use a track with any holes in it. I'd use there's another track that's got some serrations all around it, and that's the one for gluing, not this one. See if I can get that out of there. Two bot will always help. There she goes. How good is that? Very, very nice. Now that is very clean still. Okay, so their instructions are shake it. And then apply. And they say don't use too much pressure. Now I'm also not going to use a lot of glue. And I can still use the glue brush that I had for the polyurethane glue. I love these little silicon glue brushes, they're great. Okay, so they say, clamp it, but they don't, don't give it too much pressure because you'll squeeze the glue out. I'm trying to get a little bit on the sides as well, because that, every little bit of contact is going to help. There we go. Leave that there to dry. I guess I should have been using gloves, but I did. I'm naughty. Now this will line up from the simple fact of having the screws go back in. And I possibly, 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 should have, I'm gonna have to hit this with the mallet guys, give me a second.
Here we go. Down she goes. Leave that out of the way. Start this one up. Back it off to, a, I'm on number four setting. What I was going to say, possibly I should have used the tape down the side, but I'm going to give a quick wipe. I'll get all the screws in. See it squeezing out a little bit there. Because then they won't go all over the place while I'm tapping it back in. As I say, the reason I'm doing this is to stop the track lifting while I'm using the bench clamps. It doesn't actually pull the screw out, but it does have an effect. It, it does buckle it between. And it's, it's probably only going to be a matter of time before it did pull right out. So I've only lost one screw in that process, which is pretty amazing. Let's see if we can find it. I gotta tell you, I love this bench. If I haven't told you so yet, today this bench is brilliant. Let's find that screw. There it is. How good is this back feature that I cannot push it this direction? It's, it's holding on, brilliant. That cushion strip on the inside works so, so well. I'm going to give it a bit more of a centralized tapping with a block of wood. Your ears. And a bit more of a pull up with this. Take it up maybe to number six. That's better. Okay, I'm pretty sure water. Let me see what the instructions say. Damp cloth. <clears throat> Got to move this for a second. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the uh, board that I've got the camera sitting on is right over the sink. Here we go. All good, all good, all good. Now all I have to do is leave that sit for 48 hours without putting any stress on it. They say, how long do they say it takes? Uh, da, 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 da. 30 to 90 minutes for it to set. Um, ceramic or glass to porous surfaces, two to five hours, needs a minimum of 12, 12 degrees Celsius to set. So that, my friends, was 5,000 million times easier to do that than that one. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was going crazy. Anyway, West Systems, you reckon? Let me have a look at where we're up to. Are we just about time? I'll bring this back over. You can have a quick look at how neat it is.
in comparison to what happened down there. See, all the screw heads are all closed up as well. Like it's not going to go anywhere, and it really is only a workbench. But at the same time, you put a lot of love into making these things, and you go, oh, that was a shame. Well, if you're like me, you do. Pop this back down here. Alrighty, I think we're just about done. Alright, I think I've got everything covered. Had a quick look at the straddle square and swing that around here. I don't know how much chat has happened. You guys, Dave, you should try Gorilla Glue. It's very strong on many surfaces. I probably should. Um, but that prep looks pretty interesting. I'm going to slide back up through here. And I think American Screwdriver. Yes. Cut those places before he made his Puff Dog's bench and Dave's skirt. I'm going to under to hold the screws in the well. That's another very good idea. Maybe some um, rare earth magnets embedded in the bottom of the slot. That could work quite well. All right. Now, guys, if I haven't uh, answered the things you've been talking about uh, through the chat, because there's been just so much chat happening while I was doing this part, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to, this you people watching now, of course, this is the live show. If you're going to watch this as a recording, you probably won't see the chat, and that's why I talk through it as much as I can. Every now and then, if I can, what I'll do is I'll capture the chat and I'll put it in as a comment. But by all means, pardon me, if you notice again, if you want to make comment, by all means, do it. If you've watched the recorded show, please put comments in. I try to answer all of those comments as well. If you've got questions about different things that I've done during the show, put them in the comments section and I'll try and address those during the week. I leave the show up for about a week. When the new show has been recorded and all finished, I, I hide the previous one. Now, I don't do that because I don't want anything that's been said not to show. I do that because it just makes it so hard because I've got so many videos up on the channel now. It makes it very hard to search through the videos to find what you're after. If you're looking for a particular video, sometimes the easiest way to do it is to click on the little tab up the top that says videos and they will all cascade out below you. And it used to be a situation where every second one was the live stream and it was just making it too hard to go through it all. So this is why I'm doing it. Uh, that's about it, guys. Remember that... Uh, I just keep on coming back. <laughs> okay. So you can read the chat later and we watch the video later. Yes, of course we can. So thanks to everyone for watching and dropping in and hanging out with me for a Sunday uh, interlude or for a lot of people it'll be a Saturday night and sometimes for people, some people it'll be a Saturday very early in the morning when um, Daylight Savings comes into play. That will all switch around and... Uh, It'll, it'll get closer so everyone can watch. All right. Thanks again for watching and have a great week. Look after yourselves and I will see what I can come up with for a video next week. And I shall see everyone later. Bye.